The Link Between Mental Illness and Creativity, a short documentary discussing the thesis of the same name, written by Keenan Flannery. Some say that there is a clear and definite connection between mental illnesses and creativity in the brain. However, others believe that the correlation between artistic creativity and mental illnesses is purely coincidental. Today we will look at the facts and studies relevant to this discussion. There are a plethora of studies out there with a number of different definitions for creativity. So first, we must define creativity to help narrow down the studies to include only ones that are relevant. This thesis is mainly looking at creativity from an artistic standpoint. Therefore, the thesis's definition of creativity is the ability to write, draw, compose or create a piece of art. Let's begin. An article titled Information About Mental Health and the Brain, written by the researchers at the National Institute of Health US in 2007 is a great starting point. They do a great job explaining how the brain functions and how the functionality is altered when affected by certain mental illnesses. It is a long and interesting study, but to generalize, different parts of your brain communicate with one another by means of hundreds of thousands of chemical reactions occurring every second. Neurons are what make these reactions possible. Dendrites are classed as the arms of the cell and they extend out from the cell body and receive messages from other nerve cells. The information is then guided down the axon which transfers the information from cell to cell. The axon is covered in a protective layer called the myelin sheet which protects the axon and helps transfer information faster by means of electrical pulses. When information is passed from cell to cell, it enters a space between them called the synapse. Using chemicals called neurotransmitters, the information is passed from one cell to another. This is how the brain receives and processes messages. So knowing how information is passed around the brain, how do things change when someone is suffering with a mental illness? As shown here for example, when someone is suffering with depression, this causes less signals to be sent and makes it harder for the brain to receive information. In some cases, depression has been shown to shrink areas such as the amygdala and the hippocampus. Other studies show disruptions in the neurotransmitters dopamine, glutamate, and norepinephrine in individuals who have schizophrenia and other mental illnesses. The study closes by pointing out another very interesting fact. Many of these mental illnesses are seen to be caused by damage to areas such as the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Both are part of the limbic system which is known to control emotion, behavior, long-term memory and sense of smell. Emotional life is largely housed in the limbic system. Remember the limbic system as it becomes very important when discussing creativity. Roger Bailey's 2018 article detailing the studies done by researchers at Harvard University titled Route of Creativity Revealed by FMRI where researchers tested participants undergoing the alternative use task. Done while monitoring the participant's brain activity, this exam would test the participant's capability to discern different uses for everyday objects and the quality of answers were based on originality. The results interestingly show that the limbic system, the insula and the prefrontal cortex were among the most active areas. The insula and the prefrontal cortex are also known for one's emotional control and sense of focus. Along with these two studies, a large number of group studies have been done testing artists and creatives versus control groups of non-creatives with results that indicate creative people as a whole suffer more with mental illnesses than non-creative people. For example, the 1994 Mental Illness and Creative Activity in Female Writer Study conducted by Dr. Ludwig, testing 59 women in a writing group versus a control group. 
The study concluded that 56% of women in the riding group were affected by some form of mental illness compared to their control group counterparts. Another example is a survey done by Jamieson in 1989 where he asked artists if they had any history with mental illness. And the results showed 38% of the participants had received treatment for one or more disorder. So there lies the question. Is the connection between mental illness and creativity really a coincidence or is it a scientific fact? Based on the science we know showing the negative effects mental illnesses have on the parts of the brain that affect creativity, is it not logical to assume that people with mental illnesses would have a harder time creating? And why does this seem like it's not the case? Science is yet to truly piece this together, but based on these studies and the insights given by artists we spoke to, some theories can be put forward. One theory could be that even though these areas in the brain are passing information at a lower rate, the use of creativity and the alternate way of thinking creatively could lead to higher focus in these areas. This could lead to creative minds working in overdrive in a truly unique way to overcome this obstacle. It could also explain why artists find it very hard to switch off from their work and find it hard to apply the necessary attention to other aspects in their life. Another theory could simply be that many artists are more connected and one with their own emotions and feelings. Even though these areas in the brain are affected negatively, their vulnerability due to their mental illnesses could make it easier for them to express themselves through music and art. Lastly, it is important to understand that mental illness and creativity are individual experiences everyone reacts to and deals with their own problems differently. Some are more willing to express themselves and their struggles through their art than others. I think to truly answer this question, science is not the way to go sometimes. Artists and creatives are truly resilient and pour all that they are into their art form. Many of them are quite shy and reserved individuals, but bloom when expressing themselves through art. And many take pride in the art that they can create with their struggles. I really hope you learned something. And if you found this interesting, consider reading the entire thesis. You can find it in the link below. It is with great pleasure I leave you with some truly interesting and thought-provoking words and insights from some of the incredible artists Ireland has to offer. The, the, brain, the whole brain is used, like the left and right sides of the brain are kind of in constant communication with each other. So you're not just using one part of your brain, you're using all your brain. I wouldn't un truly understand it myself. It is something that's interesting, but it's just something that boggles the mind. I do. Some people use it as a way to escape. Some people use it as a coping mechanism. But if you've got no other way to cope outside of that and you're struggling in music, you are basically trapped in your own box. It's like a catch-22. Um, I don't think so. No, I actually think the opposite I think uh, creative people I think we all suffer from our, our own mental health issues but I think creative people are lucky enough to have found a way to express that and kind of put that energy into something productive and at the end kind of you know have a piece I, I, I actually think we probably enjoy our suffering a little bit more it's a two way street or you know it's two sides of the same coin that's the best way you can look at it. And for mo most artists, they can say that it's a positive outlook in life, or they can say it's a negative outlook in life because they never have a break from it. Being creative probably has a positive effect on your mental health. I think it can um, it can give you something to focus on while you're suffering with something. Um, and also then at the very end of it, you have a piece, a poem, a song, a piece of artwork that you're able to look at and, and be proud of. Personally, I've actually always found it very difficult to talk about certain things, to find the words for certain things, or to even figure out how I'm feeling about certain situations. Um, and for me, to write poetry or to write songs, that was always a way, like it was always for me a safe 
space to explore them feelings, uh, figure out what I'm feeling, write down 10 different feelings. And you know, the one that's screaming back at me on the page is like, oh, okay, that resonates with me. Maybe that's what I'm feeling right now. If, if everything's good in my life and I'm happy, I don't create content. <laughs> you know? And people often say to me, Johnny, you have no happy songs. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I have no desire to, to write when I'm happy and in a good place. I don't remember a time when I wasn't creating music. I'm influenced by the world itself, whether it be through politics, whether it be through social issues, social troubles, economic troubles. It all influences my music and it's something that still drives me to this day. It was after my first album. Now, my first project I released, I, I'm never exactly happy with it. You know, it, it is still my first project and I'm happy for a lot of the songs that I put out there. But it was my first time being able to express myself with my own voice, my own lyrics. But the first project I'd done was during a really rough time mental health wise. And it did help me push through. I noticed them changes um, quite a bit and obviously when it's a positive change in my mental health like if I've gone from being in a really bad headspace to creating something that I'm quite proud of well then the the change is phenomenal and then the other end of the scale would be when I'm stressing out about things or maybe if I've um say I couldn't make a gig or something like that and I, I really beat myself up about that like um it's something that yeah, I, I definitely, I very much feel it. Um, whether it's positive or negative, I very much feel it. 